I'm joined now by one of the survivors of the October 7th massacre at the Nova Music Festival. That's Noah Kalash. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for um, having me. My, my first impression when you walked into the studio while the news was on was how young you are. You're just 23 years old. You're just a few years older than my own daughter. And you have had the most awful, harrowing, horrific experience, the sort of experience that parents spend their whole lives trying to make sure their children never have to go through. And you seem so together, terrifyingly so, given what you've gone through. Um, you are here in the UK to help publicise uh, a, a documentary, a, a very short 15-minute documentary called Nova, the name of the music festival you were at on October the 7th. Um, involves raw material, footage, shot by people at the festival. You were one of those there. We have some footage that you yourself shot. Unfortunately, it's not of you dancing and having fun with your friends. It's you cowering underneath a bush, desperately trying to stay alive, which thankfully you did, but your, many of your friends did not. Tell us in your own words, first-hand testimony, what happened on that day? That day was uh, supposed to be all about freedom, music, nature, and good people, beautiful people celebrating their lives, and turned out to be the biggest nightmare possible. You were dancing, having fun with a bunch of friends. It's a music festival, it built off the peace festival as well. It's a peace. What was the first sign that anything was wrong? Rockets being shot above us. I looked at the sky. Not unusual, though, in that part of. Israel. It happens. This is uh, the, the area of the Gaza Strip, so as funny as it sounds, it's like how our reality, so it happens. And so did you go to take cover? Or did you go to flee at that point? Um, they shut down the party and they just told us to that the finish, they finished the party and we have to go back home. And um, I decided to stop at the side of the road in a bomb shelter until things will come down a little bit, and uh, it didn't happen, so we eventually decided to continue driving home. Mm -hmm. And that's when we first saw the terrorists. And were they driving to you? Did you see the paragliders, the people who came in from the air? Yeah, we saw everything. It was a big mess, but um, uh, the first encounter I had with the terrorists were uh, when they started shooting at, at, the, at on the cars. So you were in a convoy of people leaving the festival. Yeah. And suddenly there were a convoy of terrorists shooting at you. Yeah, exactly. And then you realised immediately what no. was happening? What did no. you think was happening? I thought maybe it's a few terrorists who run away from the Gaza Strip because that's also usual in this side of the country. We didn't understand the size of the attack. That we it had was no thousands idea. thousands of We had no idea. Thousands. OK. So you're in a car with... Friends? With my friend, yeah. Just one friend? Yeah. Um, this, a guy? Mm hmm yeah. What did you do? The minute we met them, I had to spin my car because they were shooting at all the cars. And uh, we, I was driving back to the rave area and they started to close at us from every direction possible until we got stuck in a huge traffic of thousands of cars trying to escape the party. That's when... Um, the security and police told us just run away, run for your life. You're not going to be able to get out through yeah. your vehicle, so just physically run. Physically run. So you got out of your cars. Um, was it mayhem? I mean, presumably you got the shooting, you got the noise of that, people screaming. Can you? Could you? Did you see people who were already shot? Who were already? I dead? saw people falling down, running, and just falling on the way. We lost like while running, we lost people on the way. And where did you run to? Where do you To the open to? field. Yeah. Like everywhere, looking for a place to hide, a bush or a tree or anything we could see until they started, we, we started hearing uh, guns from another place, from the place we are running towards. So we had to change direction again. And then we got into an open field where we didn't have any place to hide. So my friend took my hand and uh, we got into the first bush we saw. He had to break the branches and to push me inside, and we were in that bush for eight hours. And we've got a picture of you right now, a video you, you filmed of yourself just lying on the ground, as still as possible, silent, just hoping not to be found, hoping against hope. 
Eight hours, you learn that much. That's, how long did the shooting around you go on? For that whole time? That or? whole time. We didn't have five seconds of silence. And you must have been aware, although probably unable to see out properly without risking your life, that those shots were not being fired into the air, they were being shot into fellow human beings. Yeah. And you could hear people screaming, crying? It was, uh, we were just us, me and my friend, alone, with another girl who was hiding in the bush near us, and uh, they took her because we could hear them walking outside our bush. It was very thick, so they couldn't see us, and we couldn't see clearly outside, but we could hear everything. And, um, but you were aware of another girl yeah. who was in a nearby, but you could see her? No, we can but only you, hear you'd her. You'd heard her. Yeah. And then you, you became aware of her when they found, the, the Hamas terrorists fire, found her. What did they do with her? They said, don't worry, we're not going to hurt you. Come with us, drink some water. And she said, no, don't touch me, I'm scared. And the minute after, silent. What were you feeling at this time? What were you, what were you thinking? I was just thinking about living another second. You were literally, you're not thinking about tomorrow. No, no. You're not thinking no. about the next hour. It's you're impossible thinking... to think about tomorrow. What, what goes through your head when Hamas terrorists are outside, or like a, a metre or two away from a bush that you are hiding in? When Closing you know... my eyes. Yeah. Not stopping my, my, my breath just so they won't hear us. Hugging each other. That's it. You survived. Did your friend survive? My friend who was with me in the bush survived, but many of my bestest friends are not with us, and one of them is uh, held hostage in Gaza. Their name? Romy Gunen. How old? She's 23 years old. She's my age. We used to travel together for six months. She's... You know each other inside out. Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest concerns now about the hostages being held in Gaza by Hamas, concerns that many may be dead, possibly up to a 30 or more of the 134 believed still be being held. Um, Hamas won't confirm. This is one of the reasons why some of the ceasefire talks uh, uh, are not moving ahead. Um, but there's also a concern about how they're being treated, not just lack of food, medicine, medical care, but also given the testimonies we have had and the, 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 from those who saw and witnessed horrific rape, gang rape, mutilation, torture of people, um, particularly the gang rape of women, um, other people who were hiding who witnessed, physically witnessed it, but the concern that what is, about what is happening in the Hamas tunnels. It's a horrible thing to talk about, particularly when it's someone you're here in front of me. What, what are your fears? What are her family's fears? It's impossible to even think about a young girl just like me, a good friend of mine, such as many others that are still held hostage Living a completely there. normal life a few months yeah. ago. Like beautiful young girls. Um, I can't even imagine what they're going through. It's, it's hard to, to even think about what's happening there right now, especially to, to the girls because of the sexual assault and, and all the testimonies we're mm. starting to hear. I'm just hoping that they're okay somehow. And that she gets out along with many others. Um, Amen. A lot of people online particularly, but certainly, uh, I mean, in the millions, seem to believe various conspiracy theories about what happened. Now, you're not a political person, you've told me before we started the interview. Um, but, you know, did this happen? You know, did Israel bring it on themselves? Did they know it was going to happen? Did they want an excuse to go into Gaza? Are these testimonies real? Were women really raped? Were they, you know, were... Were well, there's many people killed. Um, why are you choosing to speak out? Why are you choosing to tell your, your story about what happened to you? Why is that important to you? You know, it happened in a music festival in Israel, but it could have happened in a, another international other music festival. It could be here, it could be in New York or any other big city. And... People need to put their, themselves in our shoes for a minute because all I did was going out to party and enjoy with my good friends. And I couldn't imagine that this is how things are going to end, that they're going to take my friend. And it's, it's already been 150 days. They're held in Gaza. Yeah. 
It's impossible it's to even lifetime. think about it. So yeah. I'm here to say the truth. I'm here to say, bring them back. Bring them back now, all of them. Are you worried that October the 7th is already being forgotten? Are you worried that, for instance, we had people celebrating on the streets of you know, America, Europe, across the Middle East, on the day of this massacre when it first emerged, celebrating what had happened and denying a lot of what had happened? We have journalists here in the UK, you know who you are, who, who believe the testimony of any Hollywood actress who says this is some, some Hollywood director slapped my bum, but doesn't, don't believe the testimony of women who witnessed their friends, their loved ones being raped and tortured and mutilated. Do you, well, how do you deal with that as someone who's been there? Since October 7th, um, explaining and telling my story and, and telling the world what's happened has become my life mission because people don't believe us. And the movie that we were talking about is exactly about that. It's about showing the pure truth. That's yeah. what happened without editing anything. Yeah. That's the raw documentaries. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. You can't ha like have not faith in it. Because yeah. and, and, and yet, and yet, interesting. You know, some of the footage that you know that's been shown to journalists in particular, but some online is actually from Hamas fighters themselves, their own body cams, or stuff that they themselves have put out on Telegram of what they did. So I never, I, what I find bizarre is how many people can deny something that even the perpetrators have not just admitted to, have proudly celebrated with their own footage. Um, I'm gonna have to ask you about this. I, you're not a politician, you're not representing, you know, the, the Israeli government. You're just an ordinary woman who just went to a music festival, who's become a victim of this. Um, but a lot of focus right now on what's happening in Gaza. A lot of focus on what's happening to civilians, in particular women and children. Women your age, younger than you children, um, who are facing starvation, facing threats from bombs. They didn't ask for this. They're, they're as much victims of this, many of us would argue, as you and your friends and others who, who were victims um, in, of, this, of this horrible, horrible uh, war. Um, should, should there be a ceasefire? even if that doesn't mean all of the hostages ever get out? Or should, is a ceasefire vital to get them out? And what do you feel about humanitarian aid for those people? I believe that we can all see it, that Hamas has zero humanity for anyone. It doesn't matter if it's about Israelis or Palestinian, their own civilians. And this is a mutual war against Hamas. That's what we need to keep in mind, because it's, it's impossible and it's really hard to understand how many lives have been taken since October 7th on both sides. Yeah. And I'm, it hurts me as much as it hurts them and I would like my friends to come back home and I wish I wouldn't have lost so many friends and I wish we all as a nation, as the, the citizens of the world wouldn't lost so many lives in Gaza as well. Absolutely. Now, your, your hair is covering it slightly, but you wear that yellow ribbon, which is to bring back the hostages, something we should never forget. Also, you wear, you're wearing a dog tag there, a yeah. necklace. What does it say on that? It says, we will dance again. And I honestly believe and wish for the day that we will dance again. Noah Kalash, thank you very much. You're incredibly brave. I am, I am so pleased you're here to tell the tale. And I'm so sorry that uh, so many of your loved ones well, didn't make it. Um, thank you. Thank you for giving your, 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 your first-hand testimony, which is what we clearly need to have of what's actually happened. Thank you. Thank you so much.